Hello, I'm George Muncy from Negative Feedback. Today I'm going to be giving you a little bit of an insight into the way that I make photos and hopefully give you some tips on to taking better photos yourself. I also want to thank Asus Pro Art and Wex for making this possible and remind you to keep your eye out on the chat because we're going to be giving away a PA27 AC monitor, which is amazing for post-production editing work. <laughs> Hello, my name's George Muncy. I'm a photographer from just outside of London in the UK. And I make work about my relationship to Great Britain. Here I am, taking some photos. You may notice it's a fairly unusual camera. It's not your everyday DSLR. I use a large format 8x10 camera, the kind where you have to have your head under the dark cloth. Uh, just like in the movies. Uh, for the last four and a half years, I've spent quite a lot of time making YouTube videos about film photography. Started off as reviewing different kinds of films and cameras, and it's taken me a lot of places since, from interviewing my favourite photographers to just taking you along behind the scenes on shoots, and I guess quite a lot about galleries and books as well, just trying to get more people involved in photography and highlight things that I like. Uh, through this I've also produced quite a few different printed publications, so I've got some experience in publishing and design of printed matter. Uh, to me, photo books are probably the best way to ingest photography. I think they're kind of the pinnacle of having your own way to display the photos where they're tangible and you can feel them and you're in charge of how they're received so the sizing the layout the sequencing and flow of experiencing a long-form project uh, to me yeah I really like photo books so uh that's where I'm from I already told you and Here's some photos which I've taken. Uh, at first I was really obsessed with America. That was one of my biggest influences, was kind of classic suburban Americana. Uh, the Great American Road Trip was something which I always kind of fantasized over doing myself and taking my own photos of this kind of dream. Uh, but I quickly realized that it wasn't necessarily my photo project to work on. It didn't really relate to myself. It was someone else's project really. Being an outsider from America and just kind of liking the nostalgia kind of aspect of it, of being fed it through TV. When I was actually taking those photos, it, it didn't feel like it was my story to tell. And that's when I started taking kind of the same approach to photos in the UK. There's a lot of photographers that live in the UK who I really love, who travel outside of the UK to make their work. Not many people actually take photos here, and I find that quite strange. I think there's a huge amount of different topics and beautiful areas, and it just never seems to be the forefront. So I decided to take this kind of idea of road tripping and start taking photos uh, here. Uh, people that I came across, places that I saw, 
and also to try and talk about, I guess, my relationship with the country. There's been a fair amount of, I guess, trickier times in the UK when I was taking these photos with Brexit happening and things like that. It felt like someone of my age couldn't necessarily be openly proud of where they're from. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it sounds silly, but when I see in America, like an American kind of image that has a flag on the front lawn, it seems really cool and patriotic. And I like the idea that someone loves their country that much that they want to have the flag outside their house. But when I see that in the UK, it's just got a different connotation to me. It's got this connotation of, like, EDL, maybe they're racist. It just doesn't, like... I don't know why there's a stigma of that. Um, so I guess one of the big questions of making these photos was, is it okay to be proud of where I'm from? Um, this all kind of amalgamated in an exhibition I had last year. Um, here's a photo of the exhibition uh, in Ireland. And ever since that, I haven't been taking as many photos because of uh, certain world events. But today, I thought I'd take you through some kind of ideas and thoughts I have behind making photos. Some things which I think are pretty simple to execute and think about, but hopefully have greater results than the amount of effort you have to put in. And I guess at the same time, it's just a, a kind of insight into how I work. So I definitely didn't invent this. It's used in all sorts of uh, video making, photography as well. It can be but anything where you, you kind of make something there's normally three stages, uh, pre-production, production, and post-production. And I like to split it into these three things of just having different thoughts about each stage. So when it comes to the pre-production, let's say you're planning a landscape. You've got this location where you think there might be a really great photo. It'd be easy to just turn up there and just take a photo, you know, Photography is one of those things where if you've got the camera and you're at the place, you can just kind of do it. But it, it's probably likely, I mean, I say probably, you could definitely do better than that. So the first thing which I think is integral to being a bit more prepared to take the best photo is thinking about the sun angle. There's a few different apps you can use or you can just kind of look on Google Maps and kind of predict the sun angle from where it rises and sets but thinking about what day you want to go and shoot it because of all of this super important because at the end of the day photography is just lighting and if you're not going to use external lighting and you're using what the earth provides you you want to make sure you're going there when it's going to be best if you turn up and your subject's backlit it's never going to be that nice of a photo. So just take a little bit of time to plan out and see whether it's worth you making the journey to take that photo. Or if it's a photo that you kind of stumbled across, maybe it's on a short walk from your house. Take a photo on your phone instead of your camera and say, oh, this is a cool scene that I want to photograph. I'm going to come back here in five hours when it's golden hour and take a significantly better photo. I also really like to use Google Maps. There's a different feature on Google Maps, which I don't think many people know about, where you can use My Maps. And you can create your own map where you can save locations. And I use this for photos. So I'd have a map laid out of the UK, photos which I've taken with their coordinates marked, and then different categories for people who I want to shoot. So a subcategory of locations of where either friends or subjects that I've become aware of live and then also landscapes or points of interest things like that I can have them all, all separate tabs and you can build routes between them it's just super easy to plan it out and make it as easy as possible 
to try and say you had a weekend to try and hit three of those spots instead of just one. I think another thing people probably should be doing more is mood boarding. It's super... It's just, I think another thing people should be doing more is mood boarding. It's super simple. It's just creating a collection of images which inspire you. Say you're doing a portrait shoot. Just collect some ideas of different poses and angles that you could be working with. And you don't want to do this as something to copy. But I think it's definitely helpful just to get your brain going, to start thinking about different photos that you could be taking. I think most people are creatures of habit and you kind of just get used to very simple regular poses or ways of composing that just being shown some more unusual things that you wouldn't normally do can really just help you to think outside of the box and I think that normally results in a much better photo. So when it comes to the production, you should already be more prepared. If you spend some more time planning, it's already going to be an easier job. But the thing I would recommend is just slowing down a bit. Taking more time to think and question everything is always going to help you just to push that a bit further and make something maybe more unique or just better. And like I said, with sun angles and planning the best time of day to go and take a photo in the pre-production, you should also be adapting to things like this in the production. If you get there and a big set of clouds just blow over, just wait. Just wait, because you know it's going to be that much better if you waited for the nicer light to come through. I think one of the key things to being better is patience, and it's something which I've struggled with for ages. Just relax. Good things take time, and it's not a race. And then comes the post-production, which I think is probably the most important part of photography. And that comes from editing. And I don't necessarily mean that in the sense of fo intense Photoshop, where you're cloning things out and making things more beautiful than they were. I think a lot of the, the truest sense of editing and the things that make the biggest difference is just in cropping to make photos even better, an actual selection and curation of images. If you showed me a group of 30 photos uh, that work as this story, and 10 of them are unbelievable, maybe the best photos I've ever seen, but you still got 20 fairly average or rubbish photos in there, the overall effect is going to be significantly dampened. If you just so showed me those 10 amazing ones, I'm probably going to be way more impressed. And I think a lot of people just aren't critical enough of themselves. It's hard sometimes to sacrifice your own photos. I've had people tell me before that it's like killing your own babies. You know, you've got this selection of photos that you've probably worked hard on. And sometimes letting go of some of them can be really hard. And I think something that helps you to be more ruthless in this kind of stage is just separating yourself a bit with time. Don't go through and pick the best photos right after the shoot because you'll have at the forefront of your mind how hard it was to make each photo. If there's a photo that you worked really hard for, maybe you had a model that it wasn't just quite working with and you had to just push a bit harder to finally get that shot, it's going to be much harder harder for you to say actually this photo didn't work because you really wanted it to at the time. If you've got that separation of time and you just kind of can look at the photo as an image not as the work you had to put into it, I think that makes a big difference. So I thought I'd show you some kind of examples I've got of I guess they're choices of editing uh, in my own photos and kind of explain to you why I made those decisions. So I've, so I've got a few photos that I've taken where I'm going to show you. So I've got a few photos I've taken and I'm going to show you through this kind of editing process on it and some thoughts I've had behind these photos. So the first one is this photo of a car. 
Uh, it's a burnt out mini. It's a burnt out smart car with a Union Jack on it. Uh, this photo was taken the day after Brexit was passed, and I just thought it was a bizarre scene. Um, weird. So I took this photo twice, actually. Here's both versions of it. Um, my thought process behind taking these two photos were, first I think I took the wider one. Uh, this is how I initially saw the scene. That's the first photo which kind of my mind drew me to taking. And also, by the way, quickly, I only took two photos because of the big camera I use. It's expensive to take one photo, let alone two. Uh, if you're using a digital camera, I guess this might be a slightly different scenario. Uh, but I've got two to pick between. So one on the left was the initial scenario I imagined. And then the one on the right, when I when I saw it, I was like, it'd be nice if everything was even more detailed, you know? If you could really see the kind of damage and the texture that was going on. So I wanted one that I could see all of that in, which is this photo, where you can kind of really see the kind of textures in the burnt metal and the rubber and all this glass on the floor. And I liked the idea of that when I took it. But when it came to choosing which photo would work best in the series of images, I had no doubt that it would be the one on the left, the wider one. Because what actually is important to this photo is the context, I think. That it's just in the middle of nowhere. It's an empty, isolated scene. And also the space just gives it this feeling that almost looks like a toy car. You know, Already it is a very small car, being a smart car, but... And it just it gives it like a surreal kind of aspect of having it that much smaller. When you're seeing it bigger up, when you're seeing it closer, it just doesn't really doesn't really capture the same feeling as this kind of surreal scene on the left. Um, so yeah, I got rid of this photo even though I thought it was going to be better. Um, but the one on the left just does it for me. So another example, I guess, is in portraits. This is a similar situation. I've got two portraits of Josiah here. The first one uh, I took was on the right, similar to what I actually preferred in the last photo, a wider scene showing context and kind of the environment, the subjects within, which a lot of the time I think works really well. And I think it, it kind of does work here. Maybe Josiah's a bit too small, but I really like the idea of him having him and his dog together. But I have no doubt that the photo on the left is significantly better because something that you you lose when you have a human in the photo is emotion. So like I could print this photo on the right huge and maybe you would be able to look close at his face and kind of see some sort of emotion. I mean it's it's fairly sharp. Slightly out of focus. <laughs> Uh, but the photo on the left, it's that kind of like longing gaze out. It provokes a lot more to me of wondering what he's looking at, what he's thinking about, and just works a lot better with the whole kind of idea. Whereas the one on the right, sure, it shows you some sign of place, it's got nice depth, all these things, but it's decisions like this which I think really help you to make something cohesive and... I think a series where I only had portraits like the one on the right wouldn't work anywhere near as well. And then this next one is actually just a crop I made. So this photo is out of the apartment complex that I used to live in and this is the lift lobby. And I really like this photo. What's its strengths are it's just kind of like completely flat symmetrical perspective and it's got a really nice depth where it's the window that's in focus and not necessarily what's beyond it and it's all about kind of like gazing out longing and wishing for something uh, and I think that becomes apparent when it's in the greater context of the series but what this photo initially looked like was this 
it was a lot wider, um, a lot more wall and a lot less window. The attention is far less on what's beyond the window and that kind of act of gazing itself. And it's more kind of just like a lift lobby. There's a lot more emphasis on the lift itself. There's this off-centered light up here and it just didn't quite work. And that decision to just kind of go against how I initially thought the photo would look in camera and play around with it a bit more and just make a fairly significant crop is made for such a better photo in my opinion. And I think this is what's important. When you've taken a photo and you think it looks good, which I probably did on the right at first, try and make it even better see is there a crop which would get rid of parts which are unnecessary for the story which just make it stronger this extra bit of wool and this extra bit of lift weren't necessary all the good stuff is still in this photo and there's bad stuff which isn't in it anymore so cropping can be your best friend so here's another example of a portrait and for me this is a hard one to pick between because i really wanted the photo on the right to be the photo. When I was taking the photos, I was like, that's the winner, that's the one I'm really excited to see scanned in. But when it came to it, there's something about it which just doesn't look as comfortable. And you could easily post these two photos together, say in an Instagram post. But I think it would come across as far less of a strong impact as just having the photo on the left. I think it's much more strong. It just, there's a lot more emotion in it there's really strong gaze, the composition's good. He just doesn't quite look comfortable in the one on the right. And this is where you've got to make those decisions. And it was probably hard to delete the one on the right, and I really wanted to post it. But a bit of time, some editing, I made the right decision. So recently I've been using a really simple kind of just idea uh, and principle when it comes to taking photos to push everything to that next level and it sounds silly it's that simple but I just ask myself what's one simple thing I could do to make this even better so I do this at each stage in the pre-production in the production and in the post-production and I just find that like breaking it down into this small task of just one simple thing it makes it so much easier when it comes to making something better you know doing one small thing at a time it's it's not overwhelming if you were to try and like it's just not just doing one small thing at a time isn't overwhelming and that's really really helpful and eventually all these small things which you add into your work will become second nature and the new small tasks you add in will make it even f would and eventually all these small things you're doing will become second nature and just part of your work and then the small things you're adding on then will become even better you know it's only going to help you progress whenever i'm asked to do some sort of talk like this i'm always thinking about what i wish i knew a few years ago when I started taking photos more seriously and it's something which I was actually told myself a lot of the time as well but it's just about patience and not rushing things I've always been an incredibly impatient person I want to do things the best I can and fast but photography isn't a race and particularly if you're trying to go down the more kind of artistic side of it it takes a long time to make something really significant and just slowing down, being patient, working as hard as you can, but knowing that it's not going to happen overnight is really important. And I think that is the thing that you need to remind yourself of. The best way to get better is just taking more photos. So if there's one thing which I could urge you to do, go and get out there, expose yourself to new things, look at exhibitions, look at books, look everywhere see everything around you, take more photos and learn from it. And eventually you'll make something really good. So thanks for watching this and uh, hopefully you learned something or were somewhat entertained. But yeah, thanks.